18 months ago, I met two sets of novice developers who had a huge amount to learn about the property game. Do you not think that it, you need to be a bit more with it? You're not going to like it's these very 80s, handles, isn't it? it? It's a Victorian house. No, I mean 1980s, not 1880s. <laughs> <laughs> On 150,000, you haven't got a hope in hell of actually achieving this sort of finish. Both projects turned out to be a lot trickier than they thought. But did that stop them from moving on to even bigger and riskier developments? Certainly not. I think it's quite a dangerous position to get yourself in to agree an offer and then change things without a deposit put down. Giving up a successful career to launch into property developing is a seriously risky business. Last year, I met two such developers who quickly discovered that giving up the day job to become their own boss was not the easy option. Former IT sales manager David Hollingworth thinks developing full-time is the way to get a better quality of life. He's pinning his hopes on this four-bed Victorian terraced house in Crouch End, North London. Ex-dentist Rebecca Lang also wants a more flexible lifestyle. She's bought a 1970s detached family home in Poole in Dorset. Surprisingly, this is one of the country's most expensive places to live, and she wants to cash in. With such an impressive range of well-designed luxury homes on the market, Rebecca's up against stiff competition. But what she's bought is this. You've got a... A house which some people would consider to be quite unattractive, probably. I mean, I think with a mix of old brick, new brick, a bit of stone cladding, a bit of rendering, you've got pretty much every type of building material you could, you could have. But it's got loads of potential, hasn't it? It has. I knew that I didn't want an old period property. I was looking for something around 1970s era. I just right. felt that that was the ideal property to turn into a very contemporary-looking home. It's a good strategy. Going for a less attractive building and bringing it up to the standard of its neighbours can really add value. But this house is not only dated, it's big. And Rebecca's got adventurous ideas. The massive amount of work she's planning is not going to be cheap. Rebecca bought the house for £405,000 and has a budget of £150,000. She hopes to sell for £650,000, which would give her an impressive £95,000 profit. These are huge figures, but I don't think even her £150,000 budget is big enough for her massive plans. At the moment, the house has an uninspiring four bedrooms, two reception room layout spread over two floors. Rebecca wants to create an impressive designer home, and it will be almost unrecognisable. She's giving the front of the house the facelift it desperately needs, adding a two-storey extension. The new extension will mean a lot of extra space, giving her four big bedrooms and two bathrooms on the first floor. Rebecca is also adding a whole new storey where she'll have a fifth bedroom and a third bathroom. This five-bedroom house should be great for the family market, and downstairs she's also got some good ideas. The basic layout remains broadly the same, but Rebecca will have a more contemporary, open-plan kitchen breakfast room with a modern glass sliding door leading through to a revamped sitting room. As well as this vast living area, the big new extension will give her an additional reception room, making this one very large, spacious house but with a rather unusual garage. And this is storage? Um, yes, it is, yes. I'm actually going to put double garage doors at the front. So it actually looks like a double garage. Right. Um, but you won't get a car in this way. You won't you? get a car in this way. It's something I have thought long and hard about, but I feel that nowadays most people don't use their garage for cars. It's a great big driveway at the front. It's got lots of off-road parking, and I just feel it would be better used as storage. I think it's a very bad impression to set somebody who's going to come and look round that they see double doors of a garage, come in and think, oh, 
we can't fit the car in anyway. Yeah. I think their initial thought will be, well, what else doesn't work in the house? In a property this size in this area, buyers expect and will pay good money for a decent sized garage. She could easily create one by simply changing the layout. But I wonder exactly who this house is for. I'm thinking, well, if it was my house, how would I want to use the space? And I would actually want this as two separate rooms. But perhaps it's me being blinkered because I have so many children, other families might not have quite so many kids. Rebecca's risks are high. The stakes would be huge for anyone, but she's a single mum with four children to support. She's bravely sold their family home, given up her job and invested all the family savings in this development. I'm looking forward to standing here, looking up at the uh, house and thinking, that looks good, I've done a really good job of this. Let's, let's hope I achieve it, hey? Not only has Rebecca taken on a massively ambitious project, but I think she's totally under budgeted. She's taking one hell of a gamble. And she's not the only one. In Crouch End, North London, David Hollingworth has quit a successful job in IT. Just imagine this is my ex-boss. He's put his family's life savings on the line and remortgaged their home in order to buy this four-bedroom Victorian terraced house. There's a lot riding on it for David and his family, and his wife Christine is yet to be convinced it's the right move. This is the largest amount of debt we've ever had in our lives and we're probably the least solvent we've ever been in our lives because in our household of four, there's only me working. It's paramount really that this project is successful because we are looking to make this a, you know, a yeah. major source of income. So yes, it's absolutely vital that we make a, make a profit. David's given himself just eight weeks to turn this place around. A good strategy if he can pull it off. If I could do probably two or three a year, which I know is quite a, quite a difficult challenge, then I think certainly the opportunity is there to, to make as much, if not more, money than I was in IT. He's starting as he means to go on. He bought the house at auction for £329,000 and has a budget of £67,000. He's hoping to sell for £450,000, which would leave him with a £56,000 profit. But this means breaking the ceiling price of the road by a staggering £20,000, which is a big gamble when there's so much at stake. I sort of fluctuate like a roller coaster between being very optimistic about it and then having a sudden panic in which I'm very, very pessimistic and think it can't possibly work. We've made a terrible mistake. In North London, David Hollingworth has given up a highly paid, stressful job hoping for a better quality of life as a developer. I was hating my job, so I took a step back and actually thought, what would I re you know, do I really want to do this for another 20 years? His strategy for success relies on breaking the ceiling price of this road in just eight weeks. It's an ambitious target, so his plans have got to be spot on. This house could be perfect for the family market, but I'm not sure David's ideas go far enough. On the ground floor, there's a double reception room which needs modernizing, and a small dark kitchen with a loo and utility room at the back. In order to create a family kitchen, he's knocking through and adding ever-popular French doors onto the garden. But he's losing the loo, which in a family house like this is not ideal. It's an important to get a, a downstairs loo in, into a family house, and this is going to be a family market. And I think you can probably fit a downstairs loo in the space you've already got by making a smaller door to the cellar. The cellar is, after all, only storage. The space under the stairs is big enough for a loo if David moves the door to the cellar. That would be excellent if we could do that. That would be, be quite a good, a good solution, I think. It ticks a box and people are more likely to want to buy this house than another house. Upstairs, David's also forgetting his market. 
He plans to turn four small bedrooms into three larger ones, but he's sticking with only one small bathroom, which is a problem. But again, there's an easy solution. I would be tempted, if I was you, considering the room proportions, to get an ensuite in here. Victorian terraces of three bedrooms don't tend to lend themselves to having a bedroom with an ensuite bathroom as the master suite and then a separate further bathroom. So if you can achieve it here, it'll make this house stand apart. I think that would be a good idea, whether we need to do that and, and the downstairs cloakroom as well. So you I, if you do both, you've got the ultimate layout for a family house, haven't you? Yes, I mean, it's a question then of the extra five to ten thousand pounds spent on that. Are you going to get that back in the sale value? So I think if you're careful, you could do them both for five, and I think you will get five thousand more. Extra bit of work. Not only that, but if he's to smash the ceiling price, everything has to be right on the nail. If he gets the bed and bath ratio right, he could be in with a chance. But having given himself only eight weeks, David really needs to make up his mind and get on with it. What are you going to do out here? I uh, haven't entirely decided. I mean, I could spend quite a lot of money doing this garden up with new flagstones, decking, etc., etc. Or I could simply tart up the garden relatively inexpensively. You know, it seems to me there's a lot of issues with this development where you're not quite sure which way you're going to go. And, and that's your biggest problem with it. You've given up a, a very successful job where you're paid a lot of money to develop full time and you need to be successful at it. You need to formulate a plan, make that plan early on and, and stick to it because I think if you dither as much as you are dithering, there is a danger that you, you'll never quite make up my, your mind which way you're going and, and that's a dangerous position to be in. Even more dangerous is not to be around whilst work gets underway. If David really wants to make a living at this, he needs to be on site daily. Instead, he's taking two whole weeks out of his meagre eight-week schedule to go on holiday, leaving his builder and roofer to start without him. I'm John, the builder. Hello, John. Yeah, my name's Alan, the roofer. Okay. Ideally, David would have been here this week. Some things like the downstairs toilets and positions of the upstairs um, cloakroom, uh, the ensuite, um, we'll have to wait until he gets back next week. By the end of the two weeks, the site is at a virtual standstill. In Poole, Rebecca Lang's project is racing ahead. Hi, this is Alan. Hi, this is Nick. Nick and Steve. Rebecca's decisiveness is really pushing this project forward. The roof's off, the scaffolding's up, and the new extension's underway. But she still plans to put fake double doors onto a tiny garage. Having garage doors with no garage behind it is, is a fundamental problem with this house. And, and you're creating this luxurious, contemporary space that doesn't work. Someone who's prepared to pay three quarters of a million pounds for a house is likely to have a, a very expensive car to go with it. And, and I think that you need to provide the option of having a garage to put that car in. If they've got the car to match and they've got the sort of money, then I think that they'll think nothing of taking down the wall and saying, I want a double garage, it's a high priority to me. If somebody buys a newly modernised house, it's because they don't want to do any building work. So I don't think it's a very good argument to say that if they want to knock a wall down, they can always do it themselves. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree, aren't we? We are. <laughs> and there's one other thing we differ on, and that's how much it will cost to complete a project of this size. I'm not sure she's done any research into what pool buyers expect in terms of finish and how much that all costs. It's time to see what the local competition is offering. And the detailing on this flat is really what carries it with the balustrading, the banisters, the kitchen, the worktop's lovely and even the tap. These sort of finishes don't come in at 20, 30 quid or 200, 300 quid a go. You're talking about several thousand pounds here, several thousand pounds there. And, and to get that sort of finish, you get through money fast at yes. that kind of rate. Yes. I mean, on your budget of 150,000, what were you hoping to achieve? I think I was hoping to achieve this.
On 150,000, you haven't got a hope in hell of actually achieving this sort of finish. Realistically, you need to be looking at spending at least 250,000 to, to achieve the sort of look that, that the house warrants. I mean, 250,000, that's quarter of a million pounds, it's, it's a huge sum of money. It's not as if you're saying, well, I think you need to spend just another 20,000, you know, 100,000 pounds is an awful lot of money. I think what you really need to do now is, is A, talk to agents about whether you can get more for your house, but B, also work out how feasible it is to find more money, because I think you do need to spend a lot more money. It's just a question of where it comes from. Absolutely. <laughs> In this exclusive location, only perfection can command the highest prices. If Rebecca's place doesn't match up, she's in danger of making no profit at all. In Crouch End, David's back from holiday looking relaxed, only to discover that progress isn't as advanced as he'd hoped. Yes, I couldn't really go in much further than this, David, because um, obviously we don't know where the wall's going to come, the stud wall's going to come for the ensuite. Considering David's livelihood is dependent on this project finishing in five weeks, he's possibly not taking things as seriously as he should be. Do you think that, um, that perhaps it wasn't such a great idea to go away just as the site was beginning? Oh, I had a great holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the you holiday did. was booked a year ago. There's no way we wouldn't even consider dropping a holiday. I mean, what's life about? It's not about work. I think that's the thing about being self-employed. You kind of have to take the holidays where you can. There is no way, I hope you'd agree with me here, there's no way we'd ever prioritise work over that precious two weeks that we take every year. If you're going to project manage a site and you're going to develop, you need to make sure that while the project's running, you're there on site all the time. I mean, generally, I'd agree with you, but I think, you know, it worked OK this time. Unless I was doing a very complicated development next time, much more complicated than this, I don't see any reason why I couldn't do the same again. David's attitude to his new career is pretty laid back. But what's more, he still hasn't finalised his plans. What exactly are you going to do here? You talk about some cloakroom or...? Yes. At the moment, Christine and I are slightly in disagreement. She thinks it's probably not worth the hassle. I suspect Christine will probably get her way. <laughs> she often does. Even. Really, the choice is up to you, David. I mean, whether or not you proceed with it, All right. and go ahead. It didn't have to. David must make some speedy decisions. And he's got to think carefully about what's going to make this house worth more than any other on the street, because he's got some stiff competition. Are you confident that you're going to get 450,000 asking price for this? Um, I'm reasonably confident. There aren't many houses of this size in the area, so there's a view that you know maybe a three-bedroom house would get snapped up fairly quickly. I found quite a bit on the market that's just underneath 400,000. I brought some details along to show you. 384 is an immaculate Victorian three-bedroom house. 369. These are all newly modernised. The only way you're going to achieve a lot more than all of these houses, which are all on the market at under 400,000, is if you tick every single possible box you could for a three-bedroom house. And that involves having an ensuite, which you've ticked. That's great. You've done that. Um, having a big kitchen breakfast room. That's great. You've done that. Having a downstairs loo, I think is, it's a mistake not to have a downstairs loo, because that's one box not ticked. And to have a really fun, cool, contemporary interior that you're not going to get with another house. For the kind of young family market, yes, they expect a good finish, but at the same time, they are probably wanting to feel they're also getting value for money. They um, do want value for money, and, and I think that the problem is, is value for money is going to be one of these at under, you know, 375, 390. And to make them pay the extra 50, 60,000 for this house, you've got to offer a lot more. David eventually decides against putting in a loo. Size 12. As a new career, he's now throwing all his energy into learning the trade. His decision to work as a full-time labourer on site is a good start. My apprentice is doing very well. He's done, he's done excellent so far. Um, he's going to have a little go at a bit of bricklaying soon. <laughs> and thinks it's easy. David's learning and things are speeding up. But with only four weeks left, has it come too late for him to meet his deadline? 
In pool, Rebecca's problems won't be so easily solved. She's desperately under-budgeted and has finally realised the only way forward is to spend more money. I'm actually going to borrow another £40,000 to spend on this project. Although it's a lot more money to borrow, I, I think it is the right decision. It's obvious, but scary. She's decided she will up the spend. £40,000 is a healthy sum, but it won't stretch far enough on a project of this scale. In Crouch End, David Hollingworth is five weeks into the eight-week development of his three-bed end of terrace. The major work is done, the house is plastered, and it's time to decorate. To achieve top whack, he needs to offer a fabulous contemporary finish. And when decisions are finally made, I hope they're the right ones. So have you got any idea what you're going to do upstairs? Well, we're wanting a colour that's obviously not too dark um, and is different from cream. So the two ideas we've got are pale lemon and a pale lilac. I can't think of a nice way to say this apart from the fact that I hate <laughs> lilac. <laughs> I mean, do you have confidence in, in your ideas? We're, we're not designers. We're really not designers. We, like, we have very plain taste ourselves. I don't like anything fancy. Um, yeah, I would go for plain rather than patterned every time. I think it's absolutely crucial that you have more than, than a cream house. It needs mm -hmm. to be something really special because for the figure that you're trying to get for the house, it's, it's designed rather than just modernised. Getting the look right for your market can be daunting for a first-time developer, but there is research you can do. So if you're in a trendy area, start by visiting local kitchen and bathroom showrooms to see what's hot and what's not. Check local estate agents' particulars to see what is selling and why. Make sure you read interior design magazines that are aimed at your market. So if you're selling in trendy urban North London, don't buy magazines aimed at country cottages. If all else fails, some big stores such as Habitat, Laura Ashley and John Lewis offer interior design services for around £200 a consultation. Getting the look right is the key to a successful development. But remember, with property, it's not just the inside that's important. With just one week to go, it's crucial David gets the outside right as well. It's definitely well worth spending some money out here and some time yeah. to make sure that this is, this is a really attractive house from outside on the pavement because as people walk up, you want them to think, God, this really is the house that I yeah. want. The other thing you can do with a Victorian terrace is make sure that the front door gives a really good impression as yeah. people walk up to it. You're lucky because you've got the original front door and I think if you put some really contemporary door furniture on it, yeah. you'd have a really good first impression as people walk yeah. up to it. Well, I'm halfway through replacing it, as you can see. <laughs> oh, are you going to keep I've it in brass? That. Yes. Do you not think that you need to be a bit more with it? What's wrong with brass? Well, You're not going to it's like very the 80s, handles, then, isn't are you? it? Don't you think? Well, it's a Victorian house. No, I mean 1980s, not <laughs> 1880s. <laughs> Original detailing would be fine, but if it is reproduction, it's safer to go contemporary. I notice you've got brass lever door handles. Yes. They look a bit cheap for this sort of development. And I think if you're wanting to get top whack again, it would be better to have painted doors and good solid door furniture that looks really chunky. A straw poll of various friends sort of indicated a kind of bit of a split between, you know, quite a lot of people actually like the, the pine finish rather, you know, the natural finish rather than painted. Do they live in the countryside, though? No, London. Um, well, do they live in Islington? No, we don't know anyone that trendy. <laughs> <laughs> and are they kind of in their, their mid-30s? Uh, not really, no. So they're not necessarily going to be the sort of people who are likely to actually buy this house? No. It's about creating an overall look that's going to get you the maximum price and to do that you need it to be very 2005. Right. Another worry is that David's builders pack up tomorrow leaving him to finish the job single-handed. 
If this was my site, we'd be having foam decorators in for three, four weeks at this stage. Well, I'm planning to do the life. decorating myself. There's a lot to do for you on your own. I'll do it. You're an amazing guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I mean, seriously, I'll be working, I will be working long hours. Um, yeah, I'm fairly confident I'll get it done. With a pretty vague design plan and no workers to help him finish, I'm worried David could miss both his deadline and his market. He has no choice but to work 20-hour days himself. And finally, he has to rope in the rest of his family as extra labour. David, this really isn't coming off very easily. It is, hard, it is really hard work. Obviously, we're all really tired because it's been absolutely full on for the last couple of weeks. David's been here really late every night. I've been coming after work and we've all been here at weekends. So um, it's, it's tiring, but there is an end in sight. So. Uh, we're getting there. In pool, Rebecca Lang is still a long way off. But thanks to a bigger overdraft on her credit cards, she now has the extra money she needs. But the stress is taking its toll. I have to say, I am constantly tired because trying to fit it all in, looking after the children, running the house and um, running a development. It does take time and something has to give and unfortunately it is sleep. I do go to bed very, very late and I have to be up early the next morning. Rebecca's got her family's livelihood riding on this development. She has to be successful. In Crouch End, David and Christine have finished their development. Impressively, only two weeks behind schedule. They've turned a rundown, dated house into a desirable three bed family home. And whilst they were quite right to put in an ensuite, the decor may not appeal to their market. So you, you had a bold moment with your border tiles. Oh Sorry, what do you mean by bold? Well, they're very bold. They, they look like classic that. and Roman to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do like not. Victorian house. <laughs> One thing they don't look is classic or Roman. <laughs> Downstairs, the bigger, lighter kitchen with its doors to the garden is a great selling point. And it has a remarkably cool, contemporary feel. It's a great kitchen breakfast room. I mean, this is a lovely, light, big room mm -hmm. with doors out into the garden. That's what everyone wants, so you've given it to them. In terms of layout, this house has got everything you could possibly want, perhaps with the exception of a downstairs loo, ideally, in an <laughs> ideal world. And it just is the last box that could be ticked. Mm. Well, I think in a perfect world, there would have been a bit more space and perhaps a bit more time, in which case I probably would have done it. Would do you regret not doing it? I'm taking on board everything you've said, we still think it, for this house, this, is the, this was the right decision not to put one in. The whole house is a dramatic improvement, but they may have limited their market slightly. Well, this is a, a really lovely room. And, and I think the only thing I would say about this is that I think you've gone down the contemporary route, which is perfect for the market that you're appealing to. You kind of half went there in terms of the design and then slightly chickened yeah. out. The shame is that you didn't have the courage to change the door handles and light mm -hmm. switch. I think if you'd gone that yeah. little step further, it would have ticked the contemporary design box, whilst being a Victorian terrace, because mm. it's traditional. I think those are such minor things. I mean, you're talking about 10 or 20 quid a door to change them. If someone really doesn't like what we've got, it's not going to stop them buying the house, I don't think, and, you know, they can change those if they really want to. Their hard work means they've come in at only £4,000 over budget, which is an impressive achievement. But is it enough to persuade the agents that this house is worth the £450,000 they're hoping for? The ensuite bathroom is a definite plus. Tiles may be a little bit heavy on the border. It may have helped 
the wow factor if they've gone a bit more contemporary. Nice and bright, windows everywhere, very contemporary. Exactly what families are looking for with the French doors leading out to the garden. It's generally I'd have liked it to have been a bit more vibrant, a bit more funky perhaps. Well, there's potential for a downstairs cloakroom. The brass power points along with the brass door handles are very old fashioned. I would value this property at £440,000. I value this property at £450,000. Now, uh, we have had some agents around and they came in with an average valuation of 445000 mm -hmm. If you did sell at 445000 you would make a £50,000 profit, which is a 12% return. I actually feel slightly disappointed now. Obviously, when I started, 450 was what I was aiming for. Mm -hmm. That would still be OK, but now we've kind of maybe hoping we get a bit more for it. At the beginning of this project, you were wanting a better quality of life. Do you think mm. this has given you a better quality of life? Not the last month. The last, last month, it hasn't given us any life at all. I, th I think if you average it out over the past six months, the total amount of work I've done is probably no more, in fact, probably quite a lot less than I used to do. Yeah. But obviously it's all been crammed um, together yeah. in this last month, really. What would you do differently next time around? I think I probably wouldn't send the builders home quite so early. <laughs> I think it's worth saying for the next one, it, it might be easier to be more ruthless, make decisions earlier on and stick with them, and be a bit more gung-ho, really, with your decisions. Really bear in mind the local market and what people want. And I think in terms of the style and interior, probably do more, more and more research. You've done really well, and I think that you've made a profit, so you're on the start to making this a career, which I think is all well, hats off to you as well. So. Thank you. And it's hats off indeed, because two months later, David and Christine sell the property for £460,000, breaking the ceiling price and making a fantastic £65,000 profit. In pool, Rebecca Lang's project is also at an end. For a first-time developer trying to compete with the luxury pool harbour market, she couldn't have picked a less inspiring property. But four months of stress, long hours and financial juggling later, her 70s house can now hold its head high amongst its exclusive neighbours. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I think, really, the house is unrecognisable to what it was. In facelift terms, this is a really successful one. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy how, how it looks. Is it as good as you expected? I think it's pretty much what I expected, but it's always reassuring, especially when the big scaffold um, hood came down, and then you think, yeah, this is, this is what I wanted. I noticed that you've got the double garage doors, but without a, a garage depth. Do you regret that at all? I don't lose sleep over it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gained other things. I've gained an office. I've gained some storage area. I just feel that any family that would want to buy this house, if that area wasn't there, they'd think, it's lovely, but... Where are we going to hang our coats? And they might have smart cars. And they might have smart cars, exactly. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Rebecca had to do something dramatic, and she has. She's turned an unprepossessing four-bed house into a luxurious five-bed with stunning living areas. The sitting room is now thoroughly modern, and the new extension means she has an extra reception room, which will really add value. The old kitchen has been transformed into a model of contemporary living. Rebecca agonised over spending more than her budget, but I think it's a gamble that will pay off. This is clearly where a lot of the money's been spent downstairs because the finishes are top end and, and it looks absolutely spectacular with, with this gorgeous worktop and the staircase and the glass door. I have to say I have splashed out on, on the kitchen. It has swallowed up a bigger part of the budget than I had anticipated. It's exactly the sort of chic finish that yes. the pool market will demand. And, and because you've managed to achieve that, you will stand the best possible chance of getting the best possible sale price. Even though Rebecca spent £110,000 more than she originally intended, I think that this house is now worth much more than the 650000 she expected. Great first impressions. That's an absolutely fantastic ensuite. 
I think overall it's a, a, a marvellous master bedroom suite. Oh, that's a shame. Couldn't get a car in here and that could put buyers off. It's a lovely feature, nice sliding door dividing the rooms. Nice kitchen, good work surfaces, good breakfast area for the family. I value this property at £775,000. I'd market this property at £725,000. I value this property at £795,000. Now, down to money, though, because obviously this is what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> As a gut feeling, what, what do you reckon that it's worth? If it was under £700, i would be very disappointed. And if it right. was under £665,000, i would be in trouble. We've had three agents round, and they valued it at an average of £765,000. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that would give you £100,000 yeah. profit from this development. Does that make it worthwhile? I think it makes it very worthwhile. But as always, it all depends on the buyers. This is lovely. Beautiful high ceilings. That's a lovely feature, the glass door, isn't it? Yeah. That's really spacious. Yeah. Very modern. I really thought it was fun. supposed to be a garage. Well, you couldn't get anything in. You'd be lucky to get a bike in it. That's oh, I love this yes. fire. Yeah, it's it's slab lovely. fireplace is very nice. It's... Not sure about the blue, though. But... Oh, unusual bathroom. Yeah. This is really nice. I like this. What, a two-man shower? Yeah, I like that a lot. I love the outlook. I could lie in bed looking out in the garden. With the it's nice, open. nice with the terrace. Would you do another one? Yes, I think I would. I think I need to hibernate for a few months now and just catch up on some sleep. With a potential £100,000 in her back pocket, for the moment at least, Rebecca decides to take a well-earned break. For David Hollingworth and Crouch End, there's no hanging about. Buoyed by the success of his first development, he's straight on to the next. But this time, with close to a million pounds right on the line, the stakes are even higher. Yeah, I'm confident about the market, I'm confident about the money I'm going to spend, uh, and I'm confident about the profit I can make on it. David Hollingworth quit a successful job in IT and made £65,000 from his first year developing. That may sound like a lot of money, but it's not nearly as much as he's used to earning. So he decided to up the stakes, spend nearly a million pounds on his next project in the hope of making three times the amount he did first time round. And this is where his money is going. A huge rundown Edwardian house in Muswell Hill, North London, that David is planning to return to its former glory as a luxury family home. The previous owners carved it up into flats, and restoring this property is going to take a lot of work, a lot of money, and a lot of nerve from David and his wife, Christine. Christine was worried about the amount of mortgage debt we had, and I've gone and increased it even more, so I now have a £1.2 million pound mortgage. David bought this house well at £720,000 and has a sizeable £180,000 budget for all the renovations. He's hoping to sell for £1.1 million, making him a sizeable £200,000 profit. The problem is that David's borrowing is so high he's paying £100 a day in interest. But he's hoping the lessons he learnt from the last project will help him to turn this development round in a super fast four months. Last time Sarah advised to get a plan early and stick to it and this time the plan is pretty much firmed up with a couple of minor considerations which won't affect the actual uh, programme of works. It's week one and David's on site getting stuck in right from the start. As he did on his last development, David is both labouring and project managing. Do you know when the stairs are coming? OK. The difference is, on a development this size, it's a huge amount to take on. What's more, this time, his family are nowhere to be seen. I haven't got my hands dirty on this project yet. Um, I don't think you will either. <laughs> no, I, I, it, I don't really enjoy it, I have to say. I really don't enjoy it. 
happening. I come come along a couple of times a week. I love seeing how it's coming on. But no, I, I've um, I've just stuck to my own job this time. So far, David's coping well on his own. On his last project, he didn't do enough research, but on this one, he has, and he's got some good ideas for the property that should appeal to the family market. He's extending the kitchen and creating a fifth bedroom in the loft. And downstairs, he's using the experience from his last development. This time, he's adding the one thing you should always try to fit into the ground floor of a large family home. Um, over here, we have the old tradesman's entrance, and that is a convenient cloak size cloakroom sized room so um, we are going to have a cloakroom this time um, certainly the house of this size warrants it and there's enough space to do it one month in and this project is going without a hitch David is on budget and on schedule and he thinks he's got some very good news I've accepted an offer on this property already at 1.1 million, which is at the top end of what I was originally hoping for and will actually make me a £200,000 profit, so I'm very pleased with that. £1.1 million is hard to refuse. It would make David a 20% return, which is what every developer should be aiming for. But the market here is booming and has risen a huge 10% in the last six months alone. It's showing no signs of slowing down, and cashing in after just four weeks could easily lose David a lot of money. Even riskier, two months later, David is in discussions about changing parts of the house to the buyer's specification, even though they still haven't put a penny down or even set a date to exchange. When the development should be surging ahead, it's slowing down. And my poor electrician, having spent two days putting the lights up in the kitchen, they're now thinking maybe they want brighter ones, which is going to be actually quite an arduous job to change them because of the type of lights they are. So it's not a straightforward case of just swapping a few bulbs over. These issues are taking their toll on his schedule. David goes on to change the carpets and some of the paintwork. This is dangerous. In a situation like this, there's nothing to stop buyers backing out and leaving a property tailored to an individual rather than the broader market. But you certainly can't fault the energy David is putting into this project, and he works round the clock to make up as much time as possible. Five months in and the development is finally finished. And he's completely transformed this derelict house into a truly luxurious family home. Hi David, Hi, how Sarah. are you? Yeah, good, thank you, yes. Yeah. Gosh, so you've come to the end of a massive development this time round. But you've really upped the stakes financially, well, haven't you? Yes, I mean, it was more than double the size of the last project. And money. Let's yeah. go and have a look. <laughs> Inside, the house is unrecognisable. And there's not one bit of cheap reproduction brass in sight. Upstairs, the loft conversion is a real success creating a fifth bedroom with views across the city. But it's downstairs where this property really comes into its own. The extended open plan kitchen now provides a light and modern dining area. Perfect for a large family. So you've actually extended this quite a lot. You've taken out the side wall here. And, and built this extension yes. on the back. It's a lovely well, space. Yes, well, I, I, couldn't have, um, I couldn't have wished for more in this room. I mean, it's come out really well. And adding square footage is the best way to add value. And for the family market, you need a big kitchen breakfast room, and you, you've got one, so well done. Next door, there's a separate sitting room to escape from the chaos of family life. It's a lovely big room and fantastic original features everywhere. Yeah, I mean, the, the house is absolutely beautiful. And you had an offer three and a half months ago on this development, and yeah. you have made some changes to the specification, even though you hadn't exchanged. In most cases, they had a few suggestions of colours for bedrooms, for example, which, because they were neutral enough, I was happy to go along with. I think it's quite a dangerous position to get yourself in to agree an offer and then change things without a deposit put down. Personally, I feel if you're going to make any amendments to your development at all to please them, 
then then a buyer needs to actually put their money on the table. Well, actually, yes. In fact, I just exchanged contracts three days ago. Well, so. congratulations. That's, um, that's a phenomenally uh, well, good end to it all, isn't it? Well it's been done. very good. and Obviously, it means I'm getting the money almost immediately. This is a great result, and David is getting his £1.1 £1 .1 million quickly. But I just wonder if he sold himself short. My feeling is, if you'd held your nerve and gambled a bit more, I think you could have got more for this house. Do you know how much the market's gone up in, in the last few months? Well, I'm aware it obviously has gone up. Um, by how much, I couldn't say. It's a wise move to know exactly how much a property has gone up. Keeping a close eye on the market is essential to successful developing. I've had two agents in to value the house, and one agent came in at £1.1 million and £1.2 million. So the average of those two would be £1,150,000, which is £50,000 more than you've just exchanged for. They'd have needed to have probably come up with a much higher figure than 1.2 for me to have really thought, well, I could have got a lot more money for it. My only feeling is that, bearing in mind it's difficult to find developments, I think that you could have hung out and got a little bit more for this development, yeah. which actually a little bit on a, an investment this big is actually a lot of money. But David not only accepted an early offer in a rising market, he also did so with no deposit on the table and then went on to alter the property to the buyer's needs, a risky thing for a developer to do. Despite all of that, this has been a really successful development. I mean, you've made £200,000, which is, which is over a 20% return on your investment, so you've done really well. So do you feel that this is going to give you the confidence to keep going with this? Is that what's next? Yeah, absolutely. This has given me the confidence to, to keep going. I think the most important thing is when a year ago when people said to me, what do you do? I'd have said something like, well, I used to be in IT, but I've jacked it in to do property development. Now I just say I'm a property developer. David probably could have made more from this development, but he's still made an enormous £200,000 in just five months. So far, it looks as though his midlife career change could be a phenomenal success. Thank <laughs> you.